Hey guys, uh, welcome back. So as part of this video, I'm going to show you an end-to-end -end integration using Spring, Kafka, and Couchbase. So let's define our requirement first, uh, which we're going to solve here. So the requirement is user tries to push the data to some external data source uh, like Couchbase using some post API with some request payload at JSON, and it needs uh, and he needs a JSON response quickly. So as per our uh, backend component, or you can think of as a per middle layer. Uh, what we're going to do here is instead of making a service call directly from the controller, uh, we're going to push the data to the topic and gives a quick uh, success response to the user. And in the background, we'll have our consumer, uh, which will consume the data from the topic and calls the service uh, layer and push the data. Uh, so uh, here uh, we have made some changes in our controller. Let's look at the controller. Um, um, here I have commented a service.create method, the service which I was initializing here by Spring Dependence Injection and were calling. I instead of that I have initialized the producer. Uh, we'll um, uh, see that producer uh, class shortly. The producer dot send message. I'm doing it instead of then we am giving a response quickly. I uh, successfully created the student object so that user will, will get a response um, a success immediately, right? So now um, let's let's look at the. Uh, um, um, you know stuff which we're gonna um, put it here to solve this uh, problem so first thing first uh, which we're gonna uh, use uh, we're gonna use Spring Kafka library as part of our project dependencies and uh, we have added here um, in the form files okay um, the Spring Kafka library so why Spring Kafka uh, because it provides a, te a templating programming model and has a template called a Kafka template which we can use to send the message to the topic in an asynchronous way instead of writing our own custom producer with our own callback as we saw in our previous videos it takes care of uh, the boilerplate code as well um, and the send method uh, returns a listenable feature uh, which we can use to add a callback for success or failures to get the result um, uh, of, of the send method from the broker in an asynchronous way um, so this is for publishing the message part of the topic. I mean, this is the theory part. And for consuming part, uh, Spring Kafka provides uh, two message listener container implementation. You can go to the uh, documentation and can find out. Uh, one is the Kafka message listener container and another is concurrent message listener container. And the Kafka message, message listener container, it provides the ability uh, to consume the message from the Kafka topics in a single threaded way. Uh, whereas um, concurrent message listener container, it allows us to consume message messages in a multi-threaded way by spawning one or more Kafka message listener container. Okay, so now let's look at the code. I've already written the code to save some time and to finish this video in 15 minutes. Uh, so we added Spring Kafka library, as I say, um, I'm showing here. Then. Um, Next, we have written uh, four classes, uh, two, two for the producer and two for consumer. So let's look at the producer config. Uh, so one is student producer config, um, which we have annotated with the, at the right configuration. And uh, the purpose of this class is to create the bins, which are annotated with at the right bin, uh, the methods basically. For example, uh, this is one is annotated with the bin, so it will create a map. And this is one producer factory, and this is the Kafka template. So so what we have here in this class we have um, you know, producer factory which is used to create a producer instances and then uh, we have um, uh, we have a kafka template uh, which wraps up the producer instances uh, and provides a convenient uh, method like um, you know send method uh, which is used to um, uh, send the payload to the topic right um, and we are passing the producer config uh, to the default uh, producer factory here and um, and uh, to initialize I mean the producer config is used to initialize the configuration like uh, broker names key serializer value serializer uh, which are required to send uh, the payload uh, in the form of biter to the uh, list of brokers as per the config um, so we have here um, the Kafka broker anyway the Broker, uh, we are reading from the YAML file by using the environment interface. Um, here, the Kafka broker is here on the bootstrap servers. We have mentioned uh, Kafka broker, only one Kafka broker, uh, but idle ways to um, pass multiple brokers here um, by comma separated. And uh, then, um, yeah, that's for, as per the configuration. And this configuration, I said, we are passing to the default uh, producer factory. Um, 
and um, so that's about the producer config class and then uh, look at the Kafka event producer uh, class which we have annotated as at the right component so that you know spring can initialize this Kafka event producer here also the same we have the send message method um, which uh, inside which we are using Kafka template dot send method which returns a callable uh, sorry listenable feature um, which we are using to add the callback um, for uh, on failure and on success and um, yeah another one we have we are autoring the environment interface which we are using to read the uh, properties from the yaml file and kafka template here um, we are autoring so that we can use this dot send method here the kafka template dot send method and we are passing the student payload um, here um, okay so that's all about the producer code now let's look at the um, you know uh, consumer piece right uh, and also as I have already shown this producer code this Kafka event producer is being invoked from the controller that's already we have discussed as for our initial discussion here um, and here we are the triggering happens from the controller when the request comes it comes to the controller from the controller um, from here producer dot send message happen okay now let's get back to our consumer so it first is student consumer config is the same uh, pretty much same as uh, um, your um, uh, producer config uh, where uh, we are having this Kafka listener container factory and consumer factory. Now let's discuss about this one. So let's let's talk about a little bit theory here. For consuming messages, we need to configure a consumer factory and a Kafka listener container factory, which we are using here, right? And um, as I've um, shown here, this particular class has been annotated with at the right configuration and the right enable Kafka. At the right configuration means you know it will create the beans uh, and at the at the right enable Kafka it detects the Kafka listener which is present in one of the bean created by this particular class. So for example, here it creates Kafka event consumer bean and inside that there is a Kafka uh, listener uh, at the right Kafka listener which is detected by the enable Kafka which is we have defined in the consumer config. So that's about the annotation part. Then we are talking about um, Kafka listener factory. So Kafka listener factory, um, it needs to set the consumer factory. Uh, so uh, basically it needs a, um, it needs to set the consumer factory object and which includes the information uh, to create uh, um, a Kafka consumer. And uh, the config object, um, and, 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 and uh, so this is the, consumer factory and the config object uh, which includes the information about the topics and other related information used uh, by the consumer which um, are uh, reading we are reading from the yaml file right um, by using the environment uh, interface um, so let's talk about um, here if you look at here we are using uh, concurrent message listener container factory what is this um, concurrent uh, message listener container so so the concurrent message um, a listener container, um, as I said, uh, um, it, it spawns one or more Kafka. It, it has a concurrency property, by the way, uh, that represents the number of uh, concurrent message containers, uh, concurrent message container. If you set the concurrency three, it will assign three Kafka message listener container. Um, and um, uh, please do remember, uh, your consumer object, uh, object should be less than or equal to the partitions. Otherwise, the remaining consumers will not be received uh, any message from the topic. Uh, it will stay in the memory unnecessarily. And um, um, yeah, so let's say you have three partitions. Uh, so three consumers will be occupied listening to three partitions of a given topic. If you have four partitions and three consumers, one consumer will listen to one partition and another consumer can listen to uh, another two partitions. And as I said earlier, also one of the advantages of Kafka is uh, one consumer can consume messages from multiple topics and some topic can and, and the same topic or one topic can be listened or can be consumed by multiple consumers so when uh, we are using message listener container we should provide a listener to receive the data right so there are eight listener interface here we are using acknowledge uh, uh, um, uh, look at here our kafka event consumer uh, we are using the acknowledging uh, message listener okay uh, which exposes a on message method uh, which has uh, two arguments uh, here one is the consumer uh, record and another is the acknowledgement uh, object and um, and consumer record uh, basically it 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 uh, um, consumes the record one by one um, uh, um, by invoking the poll method and another is uh, um, acknowledgement object um, 
uh, which uh, which uh, is uh, which we need to acknowledge the response uh, um, in the finally. Uh, basically, it uh, you can say um, you. We want to manually commit the offset um, once it is on once the payload is received uh, by the consumer. So as I described in my earlier videos as well, there are multiple ways to commit the offset. Uh, you can make uh, auto commit true, but I would advise to do manual commit always. The problem with auto commit true is let's say you are doing some DB operation or maybe you are doing some post processing after getting the message uh, from the topic. Um, uh, for example, you are sending the message again or sending the payload again to another topic after receiving from the first topic and there is some weird issue happen and as per our auto comment true the offset will be coming and you will not receive the message again once you again run the consumer so in case of manual commit uh, you have the control and you can commit the offset after you receive the rest records and you can do it in the final block as we are doing uh, here um, acknowledgement or acknowledge um, right so that's all about uh, the coding part I've already discussed. Uh, let's let's run this code. I've already started this. Um, um, let's let me stop this uh, server. Okay. Uh, then let's um, uh, create a. I've already student event. Let's create a student event one topic, and then let's uh, run this particular program here. And let's create a topic. We have let's create a student event one topic. So I have my Zookeeper running, my broker running. Uh, only one broker I'm running here. Um, and then I created topic student event one topic got created. Now let's uh, go to our database and see we have let's delete some of this record okay and now let's um, try to post some record here let's say post 007 we got the response we got 007 here inserted in the couch based database that's all so if you look at here it the offset value is zero now let's uh, uh, push another one. Uh, let's say 008. Got the response. Okay. Zero zero got pushed to database. So um, yeah. So we uh, learned uh, end to end uh, Spring Kafka with Couchbase. Um, so. Um, um, that's all about this video. If you want to learn more video, more tech stacks, you can subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. And thanks for watching um, this video.